What's up everybody? It's Keefe and you're watching the Weekly Ritual Ghost Cults News Show right here on YouTube. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Ghostcultman.com is a small business. With that out of the way, let's get it on! In case you missed it, features at Ghost Cult Magazine. We kick this week's features off with our chat with Ryan Williams of Monarch. Monarch's new single, Pearls, is out now. We also talk to Tyler from Yaucha and also of Thou. Yaucha's recent album, The Lurch, is out now on Relapse Records. We also shared our tribute video to Melina Della Margio, the wonderful photographer and friend to Ghost Cult who passed away five years ago. You can check that video out at the link below. And for a final bit of housekeeping, I have joined the Glacially Musical Podcast. Check it out at the link below. Once a week, I join Nick Cameron and we discuss all kinds of music history. This week, we kick off our series of episodes on Iron Maiden. And now, the news rundown. We kick this week's news off with a heavy heart as we have to mention the passing of three musical legends. Frank Paulette was the founder and co-owner of the Chance Club in Poughkeepsie, New York, and he passed away suddenly at age 51 last week. We're deeply saddened to hear about the loss of Frank. He was a fixture in the club scene in New York State. The Chance was a legendary venue which not only hosted countless of historic first performances and legendary residences of bands, it was a center point for the upstate New York hardcore scene. Rest in peace, Frank. We'll never forget your kindness and generosity. Guitar designer Buddy Blaze Webster. Buddy was synonymous with the design he created for Dimebag Daryl for Dean Guitars. The Dean from Hell came from Buddy's creative mind, and we're very sad to hear that he passed away. Rest in peace. We also mourn the loss of incredible country, folk, and Americana artist Nancy Griffith, who passed away at 68 years old this week. No cause of death was revealed, and Nancy had asked in advance for some privacy for her family, but we're deeply sad to hear of her loss. You may not know her name, but you certainly have heard her songs across rock, pop, country, folk, and Americana for four decades. Rest in peace, Nancy. And now for some tour news. Slipknot's Knotfest has announced the rebooking of their Knotfest Chile and Knotfest Brazil shows. Those festival events will take place this December and feature Slipknot headlining both shows, as well as Bring Me the Horizon, Mr. Bungle, and a bunch of other cool bands. Of course, Slipknot's Knotfest Iowa and Knotfest Los Angeles are taking place this fall, as well as Knotfest Roadshow. Whoop whoop! This weekend, the Gathering of the Juggalos is taking place once again in Ohio, and it promises to be a banger. We've covered the Gathering of Juggalos, believe it or not. Uh, we're down with ICP, we're down for the clown. They have had many metal bands over the years. Headline, Cannibal Corpse, Gore. This week's festival features, of course, ICP and their related bands, Vanilla Ice, Raven Black, Ra the Rugged Man, Whitney Payton, and a ton more. Anthrax has booked their first headline tour in ages. They'll headline in the UK in 2022 next fall, and they will feature Municipal Waste on direct support. Gonna get all the Anthrax hits and deep cuts in a headline set. Sad news to report as Wolfgang Van Halen's Mammoth WVH band has postponed their upcoming headline show in Los Angeles. They recently released their debut album, and they have been opening for Guns N' Roses and playing some headline shows, but the band released a statement saying out of an abundance of caution due to the current concerns with COVID, they will postpone until October. Sad news out of the camp from the Chicago stoner legends The Skull. They have had to pull out of their appearance at this weekend's Psycho Las Vegas. The entire band has come down with COVID. Most of them are recovering, but legendary lead singer Eric Wagner, originally of Trouble, has a particularly terrible case. He is hospitalized with COVID pneumonia, and he's expected to pull through, but we're very concerned about him. Get well soon, Eric, and get well soon, The Skull. In a stunning string of events, all of the American bands featured to play this fall's Damnation Festival in Leeds in the UK have pulled out of the festival. This is the growing concerns of bands, European bands having trouble getting into the US, US bands having COVID and quarantine concerns going overseas. So all the American bands, including Abigail Williams and Vale of Nath, have pulled out. However, the band pulled out what must be a miracle, they got Carcass and Paradise Lost playing all of Gothic as last-minute headliner replacements. Amazing. Great job, Damnation Festival. We love covering that fest, and we hope to again soon. Bummer news as Life of Agony has had to cancel their entire European tour featuring Doggy Dog as the direct support out of concern for the coronavirus. The band has canceled all their tour dates throughout the rest of 2021, and perhaps they will rebook for 2022 when they hope to have a new album out. 
Pure Noise Records has booked the Pure Noise Tour full of great punk bands featuring state champs, four years strong, just friends, real friends, and bearings. Stone Temple Pilots and Bush will embark on a co-headline tour of the U.S. this fall where they're going to play headline style sets each night, both bands. Opening support will come from Black Map and Devora. In some more tour news, both Korn and Pop Evil had to postpone current dates on their tours due to each band singer getting coronavirus. This is very sad and scary. Both are expected to make a recovery. Both bands will reschedule dates soon. Pop Evil to the end of their tour. Korn will rebook for a few weeks, only missing a couple of dates or canceling totally. But get well soon, you guys, and hopefully this is going to reverse soon because this is very scary. In more developments concerning the pandemic, both Live Nation and AEG, the two biggest concert event promoters in America and the two biggest venue owners in America, have both announced a sweeping change to their ever-evolving COVID policy. I know this is frustrating for fans because it keeps changing, but this is the current rules. Uh, originally, they were going to leave it up to bands and festivals to set their own rules about testing and being vaccinated or not. But now they have decided that everybody either needs to be vaccinated or have a negative COVID test to attend the show within the 72 hours before the beginning of the show. Uh, I, again, I know this is frustrating and everybody's feeling fatigued, but please get vaccinated and wear a mask so we can beat this shit down and keep going to shows. Shocking allegations this week as Bob Dylan was hit with a lawsuit in the state of New York over a sex assault that took place in 1965 when Bob Dylan lived in Manhattan at the Chelsea Hotel. The alleged victim was 12 years old at the time and she has claimed in her suit that she has suffered her entire life as a result of Bob's ministrations against her. Bob has denied all the allegations through his lawyer and vows to fight this. We will bring you more news on this story as it develops. Lamb of God will share a 15th anniversary edition of their album Sacrament today. And you can hear it on all streaming platforms as well as their DVD portion of the album, which will go to YouTube and be streamed. They are joining Trivium on the Metal Tour of the Year with Megadeth and Hatebreed very soon. What's better than a Danny Elfman song? Danny Elfman and Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails. That's right. Trent has joined Danny on his new video for his track True off his current album Big Mess out now on Epitaph Records. Trivium has announced their brand new album In the Court of the Dragon coming this October from their longtime label Roadrunner Records. They dropped a brand new single Feast of Fire and it's killer. Red alert y'all, Bonded by Blood are back. That's right, the Pomona, California thrash metalers have reunited most of their original lineup and a couple of the other mainstay players and they're working on new music but they wanted the world to know in a post to their social media that they are indeed back. Big news in the Metallica camp. Lots of stuff going on with them as they gear up toward the Black Album remaster release and the Black Album Blacklist album, both coming in September. The band announced a new podcast that launched today all about the Black Album. They had an unboxing video featuring former bassist Jason Newstead, who seemed genuinely stoked to check all the cool merch out and reminisce about the Black Album. And they dropped a new 7-inch single, which of course probably sold out. Wah, wah but it featured two Soundgarden covers the band recorded and performed at the Chris Cornell Tribute concert in 2019. Legendary symphonic metal band Synergy has announced that all their albums are now released to all streaming platforms courtesy of their label Nuclear Blast. The band for many years had had their music off streaming services, which was a disappointment to fans. The band not only features incredible vocalist Kimberly Goss, but also the late great Alexi Leho of Children of Bodom and many others. Nickelback is back in the news. They have been hit with a lawsuit, or I should say they're battling an ongoing lawsuit in the state of Texas over their song Rockstar. The singer Kirk Johnson of the band Snowblind Revival claims that the song Rockstar completely ripped him off. A judge in Texas decided that the lawsuit should continue ahead and keep going, much to the consternation of the Nickelback guys. Nickelback is working on a new album we're supposed to hear about pretty soon. Industrial Rockers Garbage are releasing the 20th anniversary edition of their third album, Beautiful Garbage. Not only is it coming out in its original form in a bunch of deluxe formats, but also it's got tons and tons of alternate takes, new versions, and remixes. The pride of Lydig Avenue and Pelham Parkway in the Bronx, John Tempesta is going to join up with Exodus for two shows, Psycho Las Vegas this weekend, as well as Full Terror Metal Assault next month, stepping in for Tom Hunting, who is recovering from his cancer surgery. John was 
in Exodus from 90 to 92 before he joined up with Testament after that. He played on three awesome albums. It'd be great to hear Exodus do some shows with John and play some deep, deep cuts from 30 years ago. Major drama in the Soulfly camp as we brought you the news a few weeks ago that Dino Cazares was going to step in and tour with Soulfly, which is awesome. Dino from Fear Factory with Soulfly. But what we didn't know at the time is that Mark Rizzo had been fired from Soulfly in the meantime. And that news came out a little bit later and we're just getting to tell you about it now. Apparently, Mark had a breakdown in his own words about not being treated very well during the pandemic and he didn't want to return to touring or recording with the band. He felt like he wasn't taken care of uh, monetarily during the pandemic and he fired many shots at the Soulfly camp in the press. Soulfly has fired back, including Max and Zion Cavalera taking shots at Rizzo, denouncing him and saying that these things were untrue and that he had to be removed from the band. Very sad situation. Rizzo was in Soulfly for 18 years, and he's a great guitar player. We're super stoked for the future of Soulfly. Of course, Mark has his own new band, and he's going to do other activities as well. Glenn Danzig premiered his new film this week in Hollywood, Death Rider in the House of Vampires, starring Danzig himself, as well as Devin Sawa, Julian Sands, Danny Trejo, and many more. And this is the second film Danzig has produced after Veronica a few years ago. We reviewed that on our site. You can check that link out below. Danzig is, of course, headlining Psycho Las Vegas this weekend. Black Veil Brides released a new single and video for their song Torch off their upcoming album, The Phantom Tomorrow. Originally scheduled to come out in June, it's now coming out in October. Carnifex has released a brand new music video for their new single, Slit Wrist Savior, off their upcoming album, Graveside Confessions, which not only sees them play originals, a corn cover, and three re-recordings of classic Carnifex tracks from their early material. We are super stoked for this album, and we're looking forward to maybe interviewing the band pretty soon. The estate of Dimebag Daryl of Pantera, managed by his former partner, Rita Haney, has filed a lawsuit against Dean Guitars and they have severed their permanent relationship with the brand. They also have an endorsement with Vinnie Paul's drumline, DW, that is still intact at the moment, but a lot of allegations going back and forth in the press between Rita and the current CEO of Dean Guitars. Apparently, the current CEO of Dean Guitars felt like Dimebag had passed away a long time ago, and he's not very relevant anymore somehow. His music is not relevant, and that people don't want to buy his signature guitar. I say nay nay. Portrayal of Guilt and Chatpile teamed up for a 7-inch single that is out now. You can stream those two songs at Bandcamp and pre-order the awesome vinyl swirly versions right now. I shit you not. Unbelievable stories you can't make up. Bobby Jazarmbeck is one of the greatest drummers in the world. You know his work with Fate's Warning and Spastic Inc. and his long stint as the drummer of Sebastian Bach. But would you believe he is on tour with country legend George Strait? That's correct. He is touring with the legend who just kicked off a residency in Las Vegas this week. And it's cool to see Bobby clean up well and keep a two-step, two-step, two-step beat. And now for a look at who rules its streaming. This week's Who Rules is Streaming, we celebrate the guys in Fractal Universe who dropped a playthrough video of their amazing song, Withering Snow, with both guitar and sexy saxophone playthroughs. Killer job, you guys. Killer job. And now for a look at some of the music on New Music Friday. Between the Buried and Me, Colors 2, Sumerian Records. Dare, Against All Odds, Revelation Records. The Dead Deads, Tell Your Girls It's Alright, Rumble Records. Deaf Heaven. Infinite Granite, Sergeant House, George Lynch, Seamless, Rat Pack Recordings, Gloop, Crayon Sun, Grimoire Records, The Last Martyr, Afterglow Single, Self Released, Megadeth, Unplugged in Boston, Cleopatra Records, Necronautical, Slain in the Spirit, Candlelight Records, Ominous Conclusions, The Outsider, Self Released, Orange Goblin, Healing Through Fire Re Release, Dissonance Records, Slowpoke, Slowpoke Self-Titled, Self-Released, Sodom, Bombenhagel EP, SPB Steamhammer, Sturgill Simpson, The Ballad of Dude and Juanita, High Top Mountain Records, War Kings, Revolution, Napalm Records, Witch Crier, When Their Gods Come For You, Ripple Music, and Wolves in the Throne Room, Primordial Arcana, Relapse Records. And now for a look in our mailbag. This week's mailbag, we have an awesome book, Misery Obscura by Erie Vaughn, out now on Bazillion Points Records. This book came out a few years ago, 
but it's amazing. It's a coffee table book of Erie Vaughn's entire career as a photographer. He started out as just a teenager in New Jersey where he documented early punk rock shows like The Misfits. Later on, he ended up joining Sam Hain and Danzig as the bassist of both of those bands and toured the world and took photos of many bands and just intimate, cool candidates of music and rock and punk life. Super great job. He also curates this whole book. And you can kind of read it in his voice if you know what he sounds like. It's really cool. Bazillion Points is one of my favorite, favorite book publishers in the world. Look them up. They have many books. Whatever your genre taste is, they've got a book for you. Support those guys. Support Erie Vaughn and buy this book. I got this awesome book at Resputin Music in Berkeley, California. And it's autographed. <sighs> You made it to this part of the show, so you know what time it is. It's the end. Thanks so much for watching. GhostcoldMag.com is a small business, and we greatly appreciate the support. So please smash that like button, ding that bell to get notifications, drop a comment, share this video with your friends, and generally help us out. As we say every week at this juncture of the show, it's a tough time in the world. So please, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and blast some Tony Bennett.